And there are five very important voices on the stage behind me today. Each of them has uh, prepared a short sermon, a mini message coming from their perspective uh, and from their voice and from their heart and from the Spirit of God this morning. And they're going to share those with you in succession. We're going to have a great time. I believe it's going to be a lot of fun. Let me tell you who's speaking today. Morgan Holmes is our worship director. She's on staff here and and runs really our worship experience. And so if you've ever enjoyed it, uh, Morgan is who you thank. Okay. Wow. So good. Okay. I am Morgan Holmes. I'm going to go fast, I promise. I want to keep you here. Um, I'm Morgan Holmes. If you know me, you may already know that there's kind of a big thing that separates me from the other amazing ladies on this stage, and that is that I am not a mom. Um, Mikey and I, my husband, were celebrating 13 years of marriage in just a couple of weeks. That feels like a long time. I feel, yeah. Um, But one thing I never could have guessed about our marriage is that we would be entering year 13 with no children. It's not something I ever thought would be a part of our story. It's really not something I gave much thought to at all. I just kind of figured we would grow our family naturally and easily, just like it seemed to happen for all my friends, for everyone around me, so it seemed. Um, But as we know, life doesn't always go as planned. And so as the years begin to pass, we kind of begin to notice, okay, I think this journey is going to look a little bit different than we thought it would. It's not going to go exactly like we planned. And there's something about seasons of waiting or seasons of disappointment or seasons of wanting that do something to you. They are so vulnerable. It feels like you're watching sand fall through an hourglass. And with each day that passes, you feel like you're watching your dreams pass right along with it. But see, all of us go through these seasons of waiting or wanting in some way or another, and we tend to respond to them in a couple of different ways. Some of us might shut down, kind of avoid those emotions, busy ourselves with other things, while others might um, obsess over it or really succumb to it and try and control it until we're drowning in the despair of it. I know for me, like many of you, growing up, things were not always easy in my family. Um, I'll spare you all the details, but we went through a lot of struggles. And one being that when I was 15 years old, my dad passed away suddenly. Then when I was 21 years old, my younger brother passed away suddenly when he was only 17. And one thing that these big trials and losses can do, at least for me, was it began to teach me to put my guard up. Just don't expect good. Go ahead expect the worst. It's safer that way. Um, Life is fragile and out of my control. So, you know, go ahead and assume that it's just not going to turn out well. So in an extended season of waiting year after year, like my husband and I have been in, it has been extremely challenging to learn to see the story through, to learn to force myself to hold on to hope, to learn to um, wait on the Lord. And I would imagine that there are many of you in this room that know that feeling, that you can relate to that in some way. So what do we do to endure these seasons of waiting? I think Psalms 121 gives us a great place to start. Verse Verse one says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So this psalm is known as a traveler's hymn or a soldier song. Because see, people who are on a battleground or on a journey, they're going to find themselves at times in the valleys. And when they're in the valleys, they become vulnerable to attack, vulnerable to trials. But they know that there's safety in the high places. There's safety up in the hills. There's safety in a cleft of the rock. And so as one theologian says, it is well when they shake off their lethargy and resolve upon a climb, for help comes only to the saints from above. They look elsewhere in vain. Satan will endeavor to keep our eyes upon our sorrows that we may be disquieted and discouraged, but be it ours firmly to resolve that we will look up and look out. I don't know what you're walking through today. Maybe you're waiting on something. Maybe you've stopped waiting on that thing. Maybe you find yourself sitting in the disappointment and the grief of what you thought life would look like, watching your dreams kind of walk out the door. I don't know where you are, 
but I want to ask you if it might be time today to resolve upon a climb. I wonder if Satan has endeavored you to keep your eyes upon your sorrows. I wonder if he's discouraged you or disquieted you. Disquieted actually means to fill with anxiety and worry. Doesn't relate at all, right? But this psalm gives us an instead. It invites us to instead look up and look out to where our help comes from. And this doesn't mean that we ignore what's happening. It doesn't mean we pretend we are fine. It means that we acknowledge it continuously. We acknowledge it and then we take our eyes off of it. We are honest. We wrestle with it. We feel it. We take it before God and we wrestle with him about it. But then we lift our eyes to the hills. We resolve to make a climb. We cannot be deceived into thinking that our help will come when the waiting ends. We into thinking that our fulfillment will come when we get the thing we desire. No, our help comes only from the Lord and we look elsewhere in vain. He is the maker of heaven and earth. He's the only ground that won't be shaken. He's the only ground that won't be moved. So I want to be found waiting on him and I want to do it again tomorrow and do it again the next day and do it again the day after that until that just becomes where my life is rooted. That if God brings me children or he doesn't bring me children, if I'm waiting or I'm not waiting, that this becomes the constant of my life. Every day she made the climb. Every day she lifted her eyes. Thanks. A couple of years ago, I was in a particularly difficult season with just the waiting and lots of things. And I, I was really struggling with depression. I was, I honestly just felt overlooked by God. I felt like, God, what are you doing? What is your plan? And it was a super, it was a super difficult season along with seeking counseling and things like that. I remember each day just feeling like a desperation for God. Like I just had to start my day in desperation with him. And during this season, And it wasn't like a sweet devotional time. It was like a, I can't make it through the day, so you're going to have to meet me here. I don't know how to go on, so this has got to be on you. And during that season, I remember just telling him one day, Lord, I am so tired of feeling this way. Like, I feel like everybody else is just living their lives, and I am just always going to be the one just here on this floor waiting for you. Just every day. Can't take a step without you. And I remember as clear as day just sensing him say back to me, well, I hope you will be. And it wasn't like he was saying that he didn't want me to ever be in a better season. It was like he was saying, I hope that even when you're on the mountaintop, that even when you have everything your heart desired, that you would still choose to be here waiting for me every day, that you would know that I am still where your help comes from. And honestly, that's my prayer for us today. I hope and pray God gives you every bit of what you're waiting for. I hope and pray he restores every lost thing, but it will not fill you. It will not be enough. So I pray that we will be a people who resolve to wait on the Lord, that we will be a people who resolve every day, morning by morning, we will make the climb. We will look up and look out to where our help comes from. Thank you.